The Civic styling and bright red paintwork mark it out from the hatchback crowd. Our car 1.0 VTEC Turbo Senior Manual List Price when new £20,340. Prices tested £20,340. Official fuel economy 55.4 MP GEU combined read more long-term tests November 7, 2017. Fuel economy this week 44.2 MPG. It had to happen. No matter how careful you are, vulnerable alloy wheels will occasionally get scraped. It was a narrow street so I was attempting to get as close to the curb as possible when that awful graunching noise of expensive alloy meeting granite curbstone signal damage. It's not that bad, but the greys really spoils the look of the Civic's lovely 17-inch gloss black wheels. Parking dings of this nature aren't usually that serious on cars with plenty of sidewall in the tires, but I dread to think how much it will cost to refurbish the wheel. Ouch. Grazing a curb with a front wheel has put paid to the Civic's ass new appearance at least at WASNT a performance car wearing ludicrous 20 or 21 inch wheels and 40 section low profile tires. Apart from that, there's not much to report, the Civic performing its day to day tasks with aplomb and you just know it will continue to do so for many years to come. The precision of its major controls continues to delight, while the spacious interior and smooth ride make it my pick of the family hatchbacks. Better than a Golf, even different, certainly, but I reckon that's a boon when you consider the Volkswagen's ubiquity. September 28, 2017 Fuel Economy This week 42.6 mpg We had a rather more aggressive breed of Civic to test recently, the Type R hot hatchback, with a 2.0-litre turbo engine developing about 300 bhp. What surprised me was how similar it looks to our bog-standard, 1.0-litre example. Although the Type R has a lot of aerodynamic bodywork addenda, particularly at the rear, from the front the lineage is clear. Family resemblance at a glance The 1.0-litre Civic and Barnstorming Type R version are remarkable similar from the front, at least, perhaps that explains why a group of schoolchildren insisted on filming our car as it was stuck in traffic they must have mistaken it for the Type R although I haven't driven it much, the smallest engine Civic continues to delight. It's just a Honda everything is slick and you just know it'll stay that way. No wonder owners hang on to them for a long time. The gear change in particular is a pleasure. It's almost as rifle bolt precise as that of a Mazda MX-5, and, due to my broken ribs, it's just so damn comfortable. Fuel economy this week 44.8 mpg driving is still a pain, despite my various broken ribs repairing slowly. What a pleasure, then, to have the comfortable Honda parked outside rather than some stiffly sprung Sportster. Despite advances in turbocharging technology, there's still a perception among drivers that a 1.0 or 1.2 litre petrol engine is a bit on the weedy side for a family car. In order to make a comparison, I briefly swapped our 1.0 litre, three cylinder Civic for a 1.5 litre, four cylinder version also turbocharged. There's surprisingly little in it. Clearly, the larger capacity engine has greater power 180 bhp versus 127 bhp but in my day-to-day -day pottering around the smaller capacity engine DIDNT feel significantly inferior. I've mentioned that overtaking might be more of an issue in the 1.0 litre car, so clearly the larger unit will be better for longer, more spirited drives including faster roads. Having said that, the 1.0 more than keeps up with traffic without feeling stressed. With a six-speed manual gearbox some other manufacturers still insist on pairing their smallest engines with five-speed boxes it's a reasonably refined motorway cruiser, too. The big difference is in economy. Our car has an official consumption of 55.4 mpg and regularly returns about 10 mpg less in the real world. The 1.5 has an EU combined consumption of 48.7 mpg and my admittedly lead-footed colleague achieved an actual consumption of 37.4 mpg. Fuel economy this week 43.7 mpg The minor irritation of several broken ribs has precluded any driving this week, and unfortunately for the next few weeks as well. Until my injury, a diet of short urban journeys has had a predictable impact on economy, but I reckon that anything above 40 mpg is pretty good going. The three-cylinder engine continues to impress with its zest and although it's at its best when revved it'll still pull cleanly from low revs, too. As mentioned earlier I've become a big fan of the spacious, practical interior. The lack of driving time has allowed me to have a further poke around the interior, where I've discovered a useful second storage area in the center console, with a second tier in front of and below the gear lever. 
I've also been pleasantly surprised by the generally positive comments on the latest Civic styling. Clearly it won't be to everyone's taste, but it certainly stands out in a conservative sector. When I finally get back behind the wheel I'm looking forward to the Civic's cosseting ride cushioning my battered and bruised ribs from the worst of London's potholed roads. July 25, 2017 Fuel Economy This week 47.1 mpg My positive first impressions of the new Civic have not been diminished in fact I am starting to appreciate its qualities even more. After plenty of early starts and late finishes in recent weeks its user-friendly design, space and comfort have shone. What's more, unlike a lot of family hatchbacks the ride ISNT borderline harsh, the suspension being set up for comfort rather than cornering on the door handles. That said, the Civic's handling is tidy. I must admit I haven't had much opportunity to stretch its legs out of town other than a couple of motorway slogs, but it has shown sufficient poise to make me relish in a road blast. Whether it'll get the chance over the coming weeks is the only fly in the ointment. July 4, 2017 Fuel Economy This week 46.2 mpg As Honda's advertising used to say, I, S and T, it nice when things just work First impressions of the new, Swindon-built Civic are entirely positive, as it's solidly made and brimming with thoughtful touches. Of note are the parcel shelf that is actually a cover that pulls out sideways across the top of the boot. A small detail, you might think, but I usually carry a bicycle and the solid shelves of most hatchbacks are a pain when they're not doing their intended job. Staying with a boot, there are also handles on both sides of the tailgate to lower it something my left-handed wife found worthy of comment. And the boot is vast. With the seats folded it easily accommodates a full-size bicycle with length to spare. A full-size bicycle fits in with ease. There's no parcel shelf to get in the way, either there is a feeling of spaciousness to the interior that bodes well. The front seats appear a little firm but there were no problems on a three-hour drive. In fact comfort all round seems excellent, with a compliant ride being a major benefit but it's the sheer precision of all the controls that deletes. The short throw lever for the six-speed gearbox is especially good, but it's also the way in which all the buttons and stalks operate. You just know it's not going to break. As my colleague Andrew English noted at the international launch of this car, it's good to know that minds far greater than yours have had a hand in your car's conception and engineering. The styling won't be to everyone's taste, but I rather like it especially in the bright red of our test car. With its vents, slots and scoops, it looks quite aggressive when compared with this oversuited VW Golf, but it certainly stands out so much so that I was filmed by a group of young car enthusiasts who must have thought it's the high-performance Type R version. Talking of performance, the three-cylinder engine is a gem and, in true Honda fashion, thrives on revs. The fact that there's only 127 bhp doesn't matter in everyday driving, although there's precious little in reserve for overtaking on faster roads. But to be fair to Honda, all the new small-capacity turbo petrol engines have similar power characteristics and, of course, that's a pretty impressive output from only 988 cc. What's more, the economy isnt bad considering that the only journeys the Civic has done so far are urban slogs, with only one longer trip. It's certainly closer to its official EU combined figure than the majority of cars. As you may have gathered, I've really warmed to the latest Civic. I'm not surprised that Honda buyers are among the most loyal in the business. For all the latest news, advice and reviews from Telegraph Cars, sign up to our weekly newsletter by entering your email here azcarfinder more long-term tests Volkswagen up.